Ultra processed foods may be linked to insomnia. Ultra processed foods have long been associated with various health problems, such as diabetes and heart disease, but it turns out that they may cause something else. New research shows that eating these types of foods is associated with a higher incidence of insomnia. Ultra processed foods are products that have undergone technological processing to increase their durability and speed up the preparation process. This includes foods rich in carbohydrates and fats. This includes a large part of sweets, ice cream, and potato chips, but also some types of ready-made meals sold in stores, e.g. frozen pizzas, sweetened drinks, some breakfast cereals, as well as powdered sauces and meat products such as some sausages. Research conducted over recent years has shown that ultra-processed foods, or UPFs, can be linked to serious health effects, including heart disease, type 2 diabetes, obesity, and poor mental health. But new research has found that UPF may also contribute to insomnia, which affects about 10% of people. Adults. The results and description of the research were published in the Journal of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. As part of the study, a group of scientists led by scientists from the University Sorbonne Paris Nord analyzed data collected from 38,570 adults as part of the Nutrinet Santa project, which collected information on the participants' diet and its possible impact on sleep. At a time when more and more foods are highly processed and sleep disorders are common, it is important to assess whether diet may be contributing to poor or good sleep quality, says Marie-Pierre Estiange of Columbia University in the US. The researchers found a statistically significant association between higher UPF intake and increased risk of chronic insomnia after controlling for socio-demographic factors, lifestyle, diet quality, and mental health. Overall, Nutrinet Santa participants obtain 16% of their daily energy from UPF. In turn, 19.4% cohort reported problems with insomnia. The group complaining of sleep problems tended to consume more UPF. The association between higher UPF intake and insomnia was seen in both men and women, but the risk was slightly higher in men than in women. The study authors emphasize that their work is observational and cross-sectional in nature and does not confirm a cause and effect relationship. Additionally, they are based on data in which participants self-assessed their problems but the huge number of people included suggests a relationship that was worth exploring. The researchers also point out that previous studies have focused on nutrients or dietary supplements in relation to sleep. This study examines dietary patterns beyond nutrients and specific foods and shows that the degree to which foods are processed may have some importance on sleep health. Given the results of previous studies and the links they have found between sleep and diet, such as the link between a lower risk of insomnia and a Mediterranean diet, it should not be surprising that UPF may increase the risk of developing insomnia. A new study appears to show the other side of this relationship. The researchers emphasize that more research will be needed to understand how these foods may be keeping us awake at night. Our research team has previously reported associations of healthy dietary patterns, such as the Mediterranean diet, with a reduced risk of insomnia and poor sleep quality, and high carbohydrate diets with an increased risk of insomnia. UPF consumption is increasing around the world and has been linked to many diseases, such as diabetes, obesity, and cancer, S. Tiange points out. The study authors emphasize that future analyses should attempt to establish a cause and effect relationship, 
but recommend that people with sleep problems consider examining their diet to determine whether UPF may be contributing to insomnia. An encounter with an interstellar cloud 2 million years ago may have influenced Earth's climate. Computer simulations based on data collected by the Gaia telescope showed that the solar system collided with an interstellar cloud about 2 million years ago, shrinking the heliosphere and exposing the Earth to cosmic radiation, which may have triggered an ice age. Ice ages can occur for many reasons, including the tilt of the planet's spin axis, shifting plate tectonics, and volcanic eruptions. But what if such drastic changes also depend on Earth's position in the galaxy? In a new study published in the journal Nature Astronomy, scientists from Boston University, Harvard University, and Johns Hopkins University found evidence that about two million years ago, our solar system encountered an interstellar cloud of hydrogen so dense that it could disrupt the heliosphere a kind of shield emitted by the sun that protects us from galactic radiation. The heliosphere is the vast area around the sun that includes all the planets and most of the smaller bodies in the solar system. It is a type of magnetic bubble produced by the sun that surrounds and protects our solar system. This bubble of material constantly ejected from the sun, mainly protons, electrons, and alpha particles, protects the planets of the solar system from harmful cosmic radiation by blocking high-energy particles coming from interstellar space. The boundaries of the heliosphere are marked by the heliopause, a place in space where the solar wind constantly emitted by our star comes into contact with high-energy particles from interstellar space. There, the solar wind loses its speed and the pressure of the galactic winds begins to outweigh the pressure of the solar wind. Scientists believe that the presence of the heliosphere enabled the evolution of life on Earth. But according to recent research, Earth and other planets in the solar system found themselves outside the protective cocoon emitted by the Sun for a short time. This occurred about 2 million years ago and was caused by the encounter of a dense interstellar cloud that caused the heliosphere to contract. This, in turn, could have triggered an ice age on Earth and influenced evolution. This work is the first to show that the Sun encountered something outside the solar system that could have influenced Earth's climate, says Marav Ofer a professor of astronomy at Boston University and a research fellow at the Harvard Radcliffe Institute. Scientists have only recently been able to map the Sun's path through our galaxy, particularly with respect to the relatively dense hydrogen clouds that also travel through the interstellar medium, the vast space between star systems. A team of researchers led by Ofer tried to go back in time. Astronomers used data collected by the European Space Agency's Gaia Telescope, whose task is to create a three-dimensional map of the Milky Way by measuring the positions and motions of nearly 1% of the galaxy's stars. From this, they created simulations to visualize where the Sun, and with it the heliosphere and the rest of the solar system, were two million years ago. They also checked what was happening to nearby clouds made mainly of hydrogen atoms at that time. Computer models showed that one such cloud, called the local ribbon of cold clouds, entered the solar system's path about two million years ago. The collision, according to simulations, significantly reduced the extent of the heliosphere, exposing Earth and other planets to the interstellar medium where gas and dust mix with supernova remnants, including the rare radioactive isotope of iron, iron-60, and plutonium, plutonium-60. 244. Normally, the heliosphere filters most harmful particles. However, without protection, they can easily reach Earth. In the publication, the scientists pointed out that these isotopes were found in the ocean, on the moon, 
in Antarctic snow and ice cores, and they date from the period when, as indicated by simulations, the Earth encountered a cloud of hydrogen. It's exciting to discover that our passage through dense clouds several million years ago could have exposed Earth to a much greater flux of cosmic rays. Our results open a new window into the relationship between the evolution of life on Earth and our cosmic neighborhood," said Avi Loeb from Harvard University, co-author of the publication. The interstellar cloud could influence the heliosphere for several hundred years or even up to a million years, depending on its size. <laughs>